Yes, there is no monolithic future of universities. Instead, actually, each university has to focus on its heritage and its core competencies. This might lead to a very different positioning. For example, um, research powerhouses like um, Harvard um, or MIT. There could be also a distance learning focus like the Open University in UK. Uh, which collaborates very strongly with edtech companies. Or there could be an emphasis on innovation and entrepreneurship like Stanford. Um, or there could be just a focus on continuous learning. So there are different positioning and it's important that each university defines based on their core competencies, um, the absolute, their positioning, how they differentiate from each other. Well, the current um, publishing model and the current career models actually encourage disciplinary thinking. All journals are pretty much focused on special disciplines, and especially also as a young scholar, if you want to make an academic career, you have to focus on uh, your discipline. You have to position yourself where to contribute to the debate. On the other side, interdisciplinary research promises a much bigger uh, breakthroughs. You have to encourage more interdisciplinary research. That's absolutely for certain. You never can convince an established professor who is very disciplinary in thinking towards interdisciplinary attitudes. But if you just provide seed funding to additional new founded centers, then you can actually also promote interdisciplinary work. In addition, we have to th rethink actually the career models, the incentives, and uh, also kind of the platforms. By the way, from innovation research, we know very easy ways to foster collaboration among different dis disciplines is just to collocate them into one uh, locational center. That's uh, famous research from Tom Allen, MIT researcher, who just said that within the 30 meters uh, distance, it's pretty easy to create informal contact, informal communication, and this is actually also the source for uh, interdisciplinary research and exchange of uh, perspectives. We have to create multi-perspectives, include actually all the different stakeholders uh, into the learning process. So this is not just reflecting research, but we also need to include practitioner. We also need to include society, representatives of society into our learning process. Because at the end, it's important that we learn to work with multi-rationality, to learn to bridge different perspectives, because the biggest challenges like the climate change and others are actually very interdisciplinary in nature. I'm absolutely convinced knowledge has to be free for everybody. And if we look to today's reality, we can access nearly every kind of knowledge, not just information bricks, but really kind of large parts of knowledge. The challenge at the moment is to reflect on them, to evaluate what's good knowledge, what's bad knowledge. When are we uh, captured in an echo chamber? And here we have to educate better, broader, and here the universities have a very big role towards society to get more acceptance and to encourage more multi-rationality and multi-perspectives. I'm absolutely convinced that technology has a huge influence on universities, maybe the biggest influence. So first, um, in 2012, when the MOOCs came, the massive open online courses, everybody has been afraid that universities could be substituted. But we clearly has, have seen that um, four out of five uh, students out of the MOOC courses had actually already a bachelor degree. So there was no democratization of knowledge in terms of uh, society. So um, uh, this didn't work because there was a lack of motivation, lack of discipline, lack of also time uh, um, uh, to really jump into that. So the MOOC technology was a big platform. Today, we have a much bigger influence um, uh, in the influence of AI. Now, also looking back to 2012, this was the rise of modern AI with the AlexNet, the first convolutional neural network. Uh, when that arose, that was actually the origin for all the kind of AI what happens today. And this enables us to truly uh, personalize student-based, student-centered uh, learning processes. So, 
Um, today, actually, it can be um, content can be very much customized towards the student. And I would say with the very new trend of generative um, AI, the student has actually a personal assistant, a teacher who, who can be in a total psychological safe space. You can engage yourself into debates and the, the other can actually take roles of, uh, um, of uh, different historical personalities or um, your teacher. And and you can get actually into a debate. And that's why I think um, the modern AI will truly first time really personalize um, uh, learning at the cost, at marginal, very low cost. I think AI will never replace great teachers. I am convinced that um, the, um, a teacher has to inspire and encourage the learners and to bring over the spark that this is the most fascinating topic what you're teaching. This, I think, is truly the task of a teacher. And then build bridges um, towards the technology, encourage different perspectives, build the bridge towards real life challenges. And this is something where technology might be a little bit limited. So if you're truly motivated, technology helps a lot. But I think lifelong learning is certainly an important task for universities and it will also become more and more important in future. Why? Because the half time of knowledge is decreasing. We have to think of totally new models. For example, why don't we think of subscription models that you book actually for a university and that university offers you courses as you really need them. Get into, offer them micro-credentials. So learning today must get more outcome oriented. So that means we should not just acquire the theories, but we should be also always reflect on how do we apply those theories. It's a much more collaborative approach to, um, to learning and teaching because the teacher will also learn a lot from the students, from the background of the student. That's kind of a lot things coming together, the one who bring in the problem, um, the practitioners, the students who work really very deep and detailed on the problem, and the teacher who facilitates the process and offers the process knowledge, you know, how to moderate through the whole process. And this is kind of a very balanced um, teaching and learning. Actually, it's a collaborative learning process where the teacher is also super excited and can learn also a lot. Well, extracurricular activities of students should be included in the curriculum. Why? Because it's so important that we bridge um, from academic world towards the real life um, problems and the real life challenges. Uh, universities have to become much more open. So it's not just the academic ivory tower. We have to confront ourselves to the real life challenges. There are a lot out in the world, real life challenges, economic challenges, climate challenges, social problems. And we have to, to, to contribute our part um, uh, towards a better society, towards a better planet. And we're doing that the best if we really include those stakeholders in, also in, into our learning process, bring them on the campus. If we look from a big picture towards the public ability to finance universities, I'm pretty skeptical because we are all overspending in nearly all European countries, we are dramatically overspending. So there will be a time when there will be more cuts. And I think we have to think of kind of uh, um, uh, different sources where we uh, get our financing from. And I think we're too skeptical with um, um, public-private collaborations. A lot of research, for example, in the uh, large language models in AI has been done actually by the tech companies, not the universities. I think this is a very difficult trend. And if we work more with private funded entrepreneurial research activities at the universities, we might still stay very relevant in, in uh, research. We have to apply certain rules, which is certainly transparency. Everything has to be make uh, super uh, clear and set up certain rules, you know, that the independence of research is there. If we take those, I think we should be going much more towards uh, private funded research. I think it is very important to state that the universities should prepare for professional life. 
And we also have the challenge to recruit professors, new professors. I think that's the most important uh, thing what a university can do is actually recruit the right professors. But how do we know what fields are important in the future? How can we prepare our student for professional life and recruit the right professors in future if we don't know what jobs will exist in future? There was this forecast uh, um, uh, cited at the WEF that 65% of all students who entered the education system will have at 10 years after they left the whole uh, uh, education system, including university, they work in jobs which don't exist today. So how can we prepare for that one? That emphasize a little bit the challenge and why we need to be more reflective, more agile as a university to prepare for future and also to prepare our society for future.